like life and death, moon and sun, it's sure to each the piper comes. And while God and goddess give for free, down below there will be fees. Despite perfect love and perfect trust, there's no way around it, cash is a must. We've sought within, but come up short, so we come to thee, your help to court. If you would aid this temple's life, a three dollar donation would be nice. Remember well that gifts when sent, return threefold of what was spent. But if you can't, well blessed be, we shall survive, so mote it be. the ritual begin we call upon our sacred ancestors to come in so in so in we call upon our kin we call upon our dear departed loved ones to come in merry meet you too this is lady nasties of universal pagan temple here with another Alter video. This time it's Samhain, the witch's new year, the start of the new wheel of the year. Now, as I just said, Samhain is the witch's new year. It is the first of the great Sabbaths. The other great Sabbaths, greater Sabbaths, excuse me, are in bulk, Beltane, and Lunesa. Now, Samhain takes place on October 31st, and other traditions, they may have it on different days, such as November 1st or November 2nd. Now, Samhain means summer's end, and it is the start of Celtic winter, whereas Samhain's cross quarter on the wheel of the year is Beltane, and Beltane is the start of Celtic summer. Now, Samhain is the third and final of the Harvest Sabbaths. Now, the first two were Lunesa and Mabon. So Samhain is the harvest of meats. Now if you're vegetarian and you want to have a nice Samhain ritual dinner, you can substitute meat with tofu if you're vegetarian or vegan. Now it's also a time for spell work, so if you have any spells that you want to do, make sure that they involve protection or spells involving new beginnings. Now. Samhain is also a time to communicate with your past loved ones and the dead. Because the veil between the land of the living and the land of the dead is thinnest at Samhain. So you can communicate or give offerings to your past loved ones. Now you can even leave out uh, food for them on your porch or you can hold what is called a dumb supper. Now that is where you have a meal with your living family or your living coven and you would invite your loved ones to come in and you have place settings and food already set out for them but you don't consume their food and you throw out their food afterwards now goddesses and gods to honor during this time now it's appropriate to honor all crone goddesses as this time of the year is the time when the goddess is in her crone stage and she is walking with the god in the underworld so a crone goddess, like Nephthys here, she can also be viewed as a mother goddess, or Hecate. Now Hecate can also be viewed as a maiden goddess as well. And the Norse goddess Hel, the Morgan, and Caridwen. And gods you can worship and offer to are Osiris and Anubis, Osiris being the god of the underworld and of vegetation, and Anubis being the god of mummification, excuse me. <laughs> and also Hades of the Greek pantheon. Now on to how to decorate your altar and including your house for Samhain. Now you can see here, we got a theme of uh, black and uh, some other Samhain themed items here, like this jack-o'-lantern candle. Now you can decorate your altar with a real jack-o'-lantern if you have enough room, unfortunately here I don't have enough room, so I've got this little candle here, but you can also place jack-o'-lanterns in other parts of your home. If you're preparing for trick-or-treaters, um, carving a jack-o'-lantern is a pagan activity. You'll hear the Christians criticize um, Halloween because it's too pagan. Well, that's because it is very, very pagan. <laughs> and they're doing so with good reason. But, 
Samhain, originally being a Celtic Sabbath. The Celts, they carved jack-o'-lanterns to invite the souls of the dead in. But originally, they had squashes and not pumpkins. Pumpkins they got when they came over to America. So a pumpkin is much easier to carve, apparently. Really? <laughs> That's what I've heard. A pumpkin's much much more easier to carve than any squash, but I, I find that hard to believe. I haven't carved a squash before, and carving a pumpkin's um, a big job. <laughs> um, and then you can also uh, use your pumpkin innards, the seeds, and you can bake them and put all sorts of spices on them and even have yourself a nice treat. But anywho, away from that stuff, you can decorate your altar and some divination items if you have them, such as tarot cards, or if you have a Ouija board and you wish to communicate with the dead, you can have your Ouija board either on your altar if you have an lar altar large enough, or you can have it in a separate space. And any other Halloween-y items that you want to have, you could put on your altar because Halloween comes from Samhain, and it is a very pagan holiday. Along with the next Sabbath coming up, which is Yule, which uh, is what Christmas came from. So it's nice to have uh, multiple purposes if you're new to Wicca and paganism. If you still have Halloween items around, you can use those because they are, in fact, pagan. So there, you save yourself a little bit of money. How about them apples? Now, I hope you all have a blessed Selwyn and a very fun and good time with your coven or with your family. Or even if you're a solitary, I hope you have a good time with your goddesses and your gods and honoring your ancestors. And until next time, blessed be.